For this, Re recording or broadcast? Video recording. So just before we start, there's a vehicle, white jeep, BP4WGK, a white jeep, BP4WGK. Uh, there's a restaurant customer that likes to leave, and you have locked the restaurant customer. Who's the vehicle? White Jeep? <laughs> come here, friendly customer. <laughs> So we are very with this evening to have his uh, whole news butter song with Hamaj with us. Uh, when uh, we cancelled the seminar because of the other programs, I was praying that Marge comes at least uh, on his way out. So I'm very happy that Marge uh, was able to uh, give his wonderful association to us. So Marge will be speaking uh, on uh, the founder of Charlie to the power of us. So without further ado, we'd like Marge to uh, give the talk. And then I will have a little kirtan and that will serve Prasad. Okay. Uh, for those who are sitting outside, we will set up the other speakers so that uh, you'll be able to also hear uh, from the outside. But we just request that you always squeeze in. Thank you. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinami Oh, 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama.
पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चत्ता शील प्रभुपाद की हरे कृष्णा आई वॉज थिंकिंग ऑलरेडी दिस टेम्पल रूम इज सू स्मॉल सो एनी वे दस इज वेरी गुड इंडिकेशन थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर योर वेरी वंडरफुल रिस्पॉन्स आई एक्चुअली वॉज सपोज टू कम हियर फॉर द वीक एंड बट देन वेन आई गॉट टू नो दैट सैटरडे येस्टरडे वॉज गिरिराज महाराज वैस पूजा देन आई थॉट दैट आई वुड राधर बी इन डरबन फॉर दैट बिकॉज देयर आई न्यू दैट द ओकेशन विल बी वेरी गॉजियसली वेरी वंडरफुली सेलिब्रेटेड एंड वी डिड हैव अ वेरी वंडरफुल वैस पूजा सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ गिरिराज महाराज एंड देन टूडे आई वॉज सपोज टू गिव अ क्लास इन फिनिक्स टेम्पल श्री श्री जगन्नाथ पुरी न्यू जगन्नाथ पुरी टेम्पल एंड देयर प्रोग्राम इज फ्रॉम इलेवन टू वन सो देन आई थॉट दैट मे बी आई कैन टेक ए फ्लाइट जो वर्क एंड कम हियर फॉर द इवनिंग एंड I must thank British Airways. <laughs> <laughs> Their flight arrived ten minutes before time, <laughs> so everything was perfectly organized. We had been, we came here on time, and we, I could freshen up a little bit before giving the class. And I'm very, very happy to be with all of you. Thank you. Very much. Now we decided to have. Uh, actually, I thought that we'd have a seminar on a topic. The topic is Shilo Prabhupad, the founder actually of ISKCON. Idea was to have the seminar over two through two days and three uh, classes, but. Uh, so unfortunately it didn't happen because uh, anyway uh, it didn't happen for various reasons i couldn't i mean it didn't happen this was leave it at that but uh, the, but i thought that at least let me take this one class uh, to just briefly speak about that topic and So, do you think it's a good idea yes. to discuss about uh, Shri Prabhupada's position as the founder of Charya, yes. or should I tell you stories? <laughs> <laughs> well, someday I'll come and tell you stories also. <laughs> But today, let's speak about Shri Prabhupada's position in ISKCON as the founder of Charya. So, before that, I'll ask you. How many of you have committed yourself to ISKCON? Oh, so wonderful! It is difficult to figure out who all have done that. So, who all hasn't? <laughs> who all haven't done that? Okay, who all? How, how many of you haven't committed yourself to ISKCON? Okay. Oh, anyway, it won't take very long. <laughs> and yeah so how many of you want that iskon should spread its mission all over the world wonderful <laughs> how many of you are convinced that shri chaitanya mahaprabhu predicted that this krishna consciousness movement would spread all over the world in every town and village wonderful 
What happened to your hand? <laughs> and so how many of you want to just really go deep into that topic? Okay, now, okay before that I'll ask, how many of you think that, the Ch that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Okay, very good. Now, how many of you think that the words of the Supreme Personality of Godhead can never go in vain? Wonderful. So did, what did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu predict? In every town and village, Krishna Consciousness Movement would spread. Hmm. So is it going to happen? Yes. Uh, he is the Supreme Personality of God and when, he's, when he says something, it's bound to happen, bound to happen. Mm. It will happen. Now the question actually is not whether it will happen or not. The question is whether we will take an active part in that wonderful happening. How many of you want to take an active part in that happening? Very good. I have a wonderful audience. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay, so let's he go through the history. The history goes back to Krishna. Krishna, although he mentioned that he comes Juge Juge, Sambhavami, Juge Juge. Huh? Did Krishna say that in Bhagavad Gita? Yes. Huh? Paritrana sadhunam vinashaya chadushkritam dharma sangsthapana thaya sambhavami juge juge. Although Krishna said that I come in every Juga, not only as in one incarnation, in many, many incarnations, I come in every Juga. But Krishna actually doesn't come in every Juga. When does Krishna come? Krishna comes once in a day of Brahma. Krishna, the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. He comes only once in a day of Brahma. And what is the duration of Brahma's day? One thousand Chatur Jugas. In one hand he said Juge Juge, <laughs> but now consider four Jugas make one Divya Juga. One thousand Divya Juga make a day of Brahma. And in a day of Brahma Krishna comes once. So that means not Juge Juge, but once in four thousand Jugas he comes only once. And the Vedas are describing when does Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead comes. When does he come? In a day of Brahma there are 14 Manus. The seventh Manu is Vaivashyata Manu. In Bhagavad Gita do you remember Krishna is saying Imang Vivashyate Jogam Praktavan Aham Abhayam Vivashwan Manave Praho Mano Rikshakuve Avrapit. He said, I gave this knowledge first to Vivashan, the sun god. Then sun god gave it to his son, Manu. So sun god is Vivashan, and Vivashan's son, that Manu, is known as Vaivashvata Manu. That means Manu, the son of Vivashan. So he is the seventh Manu. And one Manu's uh, duration of rain, period of rain, is 71 Chatur Jugas. Uh, just like 1000 divided by 14 is how much? I'm sure you all are mathematical, <laughs> uh, very astute. <laughs> so. <clears throat> 1,000 divided by 14 is almost 
71 plus something. So, uh, roughly let us say one Manu's reign is 71 Chaturju. So, during the reign of Vivashwan, the 71 Chatur, out of 71 Chatur Yuga, the 28th Chatur Yuga, in Dwapar Yuga, at the end of Dwapar Yuga, Krishna, the original Supreme Personality of Godhead, comes. Hmm. Now, which Manvantar this is? Which Manu's reign this is? Now? Which Manu's? Which Manu's reign I am asking? Uh, which Manu? Vaivashyata Manu's reign. Which, how, which Chatur Yuga is going on? 28th Chatur Yuga. Dwapar Yuga uh, ended, uh, Kali Yuga began. And during the end of Dwapar Yuga, Krishna, the original Supreme Personality of Godhead came. Mm. The original Supreme Personality of Godhead. Who is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead? Uh, Krishna. But again, uh, Krishna has also has got three aspects. Krishna in Ayodha, Krishna in Dwarka, Krishna in Mathura, Krishna in Vrindavan. So out of them, which one is the Supreme Personality of God? Is which Krishna? Krishna? Krishna of Vrindavan. So that Krishna of Vrindavan performed his pastime. Now the problem is, uh, or the confusing factor is, that Krishna of Vrindavan doesn't act like the Supreme Personality of God. He is the Supreme Personality of God, but he doesn't act like a act like the Supreme Personality of God. He acts like a cowherd boy. So is it, isn't it difficult to figure out or accept that the cowherd boy is the Supreme Personality of God? His majestic grandeur is not there. He's just an ordinary cowherd boy. Why he does that, that is another uh, thing we don't know we don't want to get into that uh, so Krishna the original supreme personality of Godhead came and revealed his Vrindavan pastimes mm. now when the when God acts like the act like a cowherd boy won't it be difficult to recognize him as a cowherd as a supreme personality of Godhead uh, like just consider uh, the king <coughs> If the king, one day you find that he is playing in the field uh, as a as a cowherd boy, <laughs> how will you feel? Do you rec will you be recognized? Will you be able to recognize him as the king? Uh, he will think that well, he is just an ordinary cowherd. Boy. I mean, I was hesitating to use the expression cowherd boy because most really. Many of you won't even know what a cowherd boy is. <laughs> because nowadays, you know, nobody is herding the cows here. Uh, and <laughs> so, <clears throat> so that is a problem. To recognize God in his Vrindavan pastime is very difficult. So, the Supreme Personality of God had considered that I reveal my Vrindavan pastimes. Now, how will anybody ever understand uh, me, recognize me? Therefore, he came as a devotee. And who is the devotee Supreme Personality of Godhead? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is indicating, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching that that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. God came, but he is not saying, I am God. Krishna did that in Bhagavad Gita. Krishna said, I am God. Whether you accept it or not, it's up to you. <laughs> but irrespective of what you think, I am what I am. <laughs> and not only that, Krishna, in order to dispel our doubts, 
Krishna even revealed his universal form. He showed his extremely grand aspect, the source of everything, origin of everything, shelter of everything, cause of everything. So that's how he displayed his universal form. But now, <clears throat> as coming as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came as a devotee. And he is God, but he is playing the role of a devotee. So much so that when somebody says, you are God, what did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu do? What did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu do? Yes, he covered his ears and said, Vishnu, Vishnu, as if I heard something terrible. <laughs> but what he did, what did he do? He said, he is God, Krishna is God. That Krishna is God. I am his devotee. And in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us how to become a devotee. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spread his Krishna consciousness movement, uh, Sankirtan Jagya, all throughout India. Mahaprabhu <coughs> remained on this planet for 48 years. Out of this 48 years, for 24 years, he was in Navadip, living at, as a householder. Then he took sannyas and he left home. For six years he traveled around India. And during his travel in the six years he inundated India with Krishna consciousness. And then <clears throat> after his disappearance the mission continued like Nityananda Prabhu carried on the mission. The six Goswamis of Vrindavan carried on the mission. The Goswamis of Vrindavan carried on. Then uh, three very, very exemplary devotees, uh, Narottam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, and Shamananda Prabhu. Three of them were spreading Krishna consciousness very, very effectively at that time. But then gradually his Sankirtan movement became eclipsed by Sri, by the teachings, by the ans by the deviant propagation of the unscrupulous people, those who are called Sahajiyas. In the name of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they started to introduce all kinds of nonsensical things. And as a result of that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings got lost. Not lost, almost covered over, eclipsed. People, these people are taking, may, taking the <coughs> glorious uh, recognition of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but what they were presenting was very, very deviant thing, not at all in line with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In simple words we can say that if somebody comes and tells you that to break the four regulative principles is the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how will you feel? And in a way that's what was going on. Not all of them, but they thought that in the name of Chait Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so famous that if they presented their idea in the name of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then people will take it. Uh, because most of the people are ignorant, most of the people are quite stupid. Uh, so they started to say things like that. And they are Aul, Baul, Lara, Leri. Uh, even the Buddhists were taking uh, presenting their philosophy in the name of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lara means shaved head. The Buddhists shave up their head. Uh, and they say that we are followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He shaves his head, I, we also shave our head. We are shaven headed, so we, both, we belong to the same plan. <laughs> uh, 
But what is the teaching? Impersonalism, voidism, atheism. So in this way, all kinds of deviant practices eclipsed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's very, very profound, very sublime, and very wonderfully uplifting teachings. And at that time when Krishna, Mahaprabhu's teachings were practically lost, at that time Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur came. And he revived Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings. When Bhakti Vinod Thakur was about to start the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to revive the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was looking for Chaitanya Charitamrita. And can you imagine, in entire Bengal, he couldn't find a single copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Eventually, in Orissa, he found one copy. And he took that handwritten copy and with his Amrita Prabhaha Bhashya, with his own commentary, which literally means uh, the flow of the commentary that is the flow of nectar, the nectarian flow <coughs> of mm, Mahaprabhu's wonderful teachings. With that commentary, Bhaktivinoda Thakur started to present Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings. He printed books and he was preaching, but he was a government officer, very high-ranking government officer, so he didn't have enough time. Therefore, he prayed to Lord Jagannath to send a qualified assistant who could further his mission. And as a result of his prayer, Lord Jagannath sent him a very wonderful personality. Who is that personality? Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur again inundated the whole of India with Krishna consciousness. Those days, uh, almost hundred years ago, Bhakti Vinod Thak uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur established sixty-three temples in India. Can you imagine when transport and communication was so primitive? Uh, he established sixty-three temples. And when he came across one 26-year-old young man in 1922, what did he tell him? Uh, to take this mission outside of India and spread it all over the world through English language. Who is that personality? Srila Prabhupada. And did he do it? Yes. Okay. Srila Prabhupada, fulfilling the desire of his spiritual master, took Krishna consciousness out of India and spread it all over the world. But what is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's prediction? Just all over the world? Or there was some definite connotation to that? What was that? every town and village. Now, in order to do that, uh, okay, let us consider at what age Srila Prabhupada start to preach Krishna Consciousness? Uh, Srila Prabhupada started to preach Krishna Consciousness in the West at the age of 70. So when you are 70 years old, uh, and if you are not in Maya, <laughs> then, uh, what do you think for how many more years you will be here? Uh, 
at least you know not very long. <laughs> Seventy years have gone by. And you that this mission, uh, to continue this mission, uh, he won't be able to fulfill to the ultimate extent. Now when you know that you won't be able to do it yourself completely, then what do you actually want to do? One thing you do is you find a appropriate successor. Right? But Prabhupada already saw that in Kali Yuga to get an appropriate successor is very difficult. Because he saw himself what happened to his Guru Maharaj's institution. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also established an institution hmm. called Gauriya Mission. And he instructed his disciples to continue the mission, continue the institution collectively uh, through a governing body. But his disciples didn't understand that instruction. They considered that how can a spiritual organization run by a group of managers. For a spiritual organization, we need a spiritual head. So they appointed a spiritual head. Although Bhakti Siddhanta Sharshi Thakur didn't want that. <clears throat> and he didn't mention anything about that. He didn't mention anything about uh, someone becoming a successor to his. It's all right, don't worry, don't worry. Sit down. So, so they, disregarding his instruction, they appoint a successor, an acharya. And then that acharya had spiritual difficulty. So when he had spiritual difficulty, when he fell down, then what was the natural consequence? If the structure is resting on one person, and if that person uh, fails, if the person uh, falls down, then what would happen naturally to that structure? Collapsed. So Prabhupada himself saw what happened to his Guru Maharaj's institution. Therefore Prabhupada emphatically told us, don't make the same mistake that my God brothers made after Guru Maharaj's disappearance. And <clears throat> that instruction was uh, twofold actually. The one aspect is that manage the institution collectively through the GBC body. And the other thing Prabhupada himself pointed out but did not so emphatically establish, and that is his position as the founder Acharya. Okay, so to go back to the point that if something is not going to happen in one's lifetime, what would be the natural thing that he would like to do? Like, as I said, find a successor, but we saw the problem in getting a successor. Therefore, what is the solution to continue? An institution. The institution will go on generation after generation if it is properly structured. And that's why Prabhupada, as soon as he started to preach in the West, the first thing he did is to establish that institution. 
And that institution is the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Like imagine Prabhupada started in a small little storefront in the rundown area of New York City, Lower East Side, 26th Second Avenue. The place, you know, which is infested with bums and hobos. <coughs> so there Prabhupada established a small, in a small little place, about one-fourth the size of this room. If not one-fourth, at least one-third <laughs> the size of this room. But Prabhupada is, Prabhupada named this institution as, mind you, the international. <laughs> And many times people write, uh, I mean, name their institution in so many ways. Uh, like we see people are establishing their uh, companies and things. Uh, so many people write, uh, the international uh, cardboard manufacturing company. <laughs> <laughs> There is no harm in making that name sound big. <laughs> but that was not the case with Srila Prabhupada. We can see that, uh, Prabhupada's seriousness. Prabhupada called it the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Krishna Consciousness, the lawyer who was uh, forming the company, he actually told Prabhupada, I think it will be better to call this institution as the International Society for God Consciousness. Because Krishna people don't understand. But what was Prabhupada's response? No. International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Because I have come here to make everyone understand that Krishna is God. People speak of God, but they don't know who He is. They don't have any idea who God is. So Prabhupada was so emphatic. I came here to make everybody understand that Krishna is God. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So <clears throat> this is how uh, we could see the foresight of Srila Prabhupada. So Prabhupada knew to continue the mission we need an institution. Uh, and that institution must be collectively managed. And that institution should not have just one head. Or should not have uh, successors as head. Because one generation, two generation, three generation may go on with the succession uh, we may be, uh, somebody came and became very loyal, very efficient, very committed, very pure. And next generation also may be very committed, very pure and so forth. But if the generation after that, somebody doesn't fit the bill, then what will happen? Uh, the structure will collapse. But if that institution is collectively managed, now this is the advantage of the collective management. If one person has spiritual difficulty and if there are 25 other members, then they'll absorb the shock. Uh, they will uh, maintain the institution, <coughs> protect the institution. And that's what we saw also in ISKCON. Uh, if we look at the history of ISKCON, we'll see those very, very prominent leaders, uh, practically uh, most of them uh, had spiritual difficulty. But ISKCON, although there has been massive damage, massive damage, but institution continued. 
For that matter, I'm sure many of you who have been connected to ISKCON for many years know that in South Africa, two such prominent leaders had spiritual difficulty, caused a great damage to South Africa. But it's going on. Why? Because of this concept of collective management. Now the question is that yes, a spiritual institution needs a spiritual head. So the institution needs two things. Just like for the body to function properly, it needs very efficient, powerful arms. Uh, so these arms are the managing aspect. Mm. But just will the arms of the body be enough? What actually is the most important aspect, the part of the body? The head. So in this body of ISKCON, the arms have been very, very effective in performing their roles, but uh, what is also needed is the head. So who is the head or who will continue to be the head? Srila Prabhupada. Mm. And that is what uh, this book is trying to establish. Do you have a copy? Okay. <clears throat> This is the book, it's about 120 pages. The main theme is actually only four and a half pages. And the remaining part, about 100 pages, is just elaboration and research. The findings from the research, dwelling in the history and presenting the purpose. And the GBC in this way, actually in 19, I'm sorry, 2006, in the GBC we formed a subcommittee called Prabhupada's Position Committee. And this committee uh, met twice every year and discussed extensively uh, about this objective, Prabhupada's position. And then about three years back, we decided to write a book on that, based on the discussion that we had and the conclusion that we arrived. And we got uh, Rabindu Saru Prabhu, who is one of the most brilliant writers of ISKCON, and he took three years to write this book. <laughs> Why three years? Because he did very extensive research. And then not only that, then this book was given to all the GBC members and senior devotees of our movement to go through it and give their input or give their criticism, give their collections. And then finally this book came out. This book is the GBC position paper. GBC is establishing uh, this position that Srila Prabhupada is the founder Acharya of ISKCON. What does it mean that Srila Prabhupada is the spiritual head of ISKCON for all time. <coughs> Prabhupada is a founder. No one will ever contest that point. Uh, who founded ISKCON? Srila Prabhupada. Who is the founder of ISKCON? <laughs> so that is no problem. <laughs> but the problem is that the issue actually was that Acharya aspect. Acharya. What is the meaning of the word Acharya? Acharya means spiritual head. Acharya means the spiritual head. So who is the spiritual head of ISKCON? Yeah. 
Even though Srila Prabhupada is not present today, Srila Prabhupada is the spiritual head of ISKCON. So that shows even when Srila Prabhupada will not be here, Prabhupada will remain the spiritual head of ISKCON. As long as ISKCON will be there, who will be the spiritual head? Srila Prabhupada. So that is the basic. Uh, understanding and the purpose. Now the question arises, then what about the present gurus? What about present spiritual leaders? Both Sri Diksha gurus and Shiksha gurus. The answer to that is, they will function as subservient to Srila Prabhupada. And ideologically, idealistically, they will function under the authority of the GBC body because the GBC is the ultimate managing authority of ISKCON. And to justify that point or to clarify the point, we can say that Srila Prabhupada is, um, is the Shiksha Guru of all the devotees of ISKCON. Can anybody contest that? On whose shiksha, on his whose teachings ISKCON is established? Srila Prabhupada. And uh, incidentally we have to also take note that ISKCON is uh, in, in this line, Gauriya Vaishnav line, Diksha is not really important. Diksha is not so important. Our line is not a Diksha Parampara. Our line is Shiksha Parampara. For example, Baladevi Dabhushan is not a Diksha disciple of Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. Baladevi Dabhushan is not the spiritual Diksha guru of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj is not a Diksha disciple of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Or, sorry, Bhakti Vinod Thakur is not a Diksha disciple of Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. Gaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj is not a Diksha disciple of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Then, why do, then what is this line then? This line is Shiksha. In that respect, we have to understand the difference between Diksha and Shiksha. In simple words, we can say, Diksha is the admission and Shiksha is the education. You got admitted to Oxford University, but if you don't attend the classes, what will happen? Will you get any benefit out of that? So Diksha is important, admission is important, but admission is not everything. Uh, education, Shiksha is the important aspect. Now in ISKCON, whose Shiksha prevails? Srila Prabhupada's Shiksha. Every morning we give Srimad Bhagavatam class on, based on whose books and whose purport? Srila Prabhupada. And in the class, if I say anything off the wall, <laughs> which is not mentioned in Srila Prabhupada's book, then what will happen to me? Huh? All the devotees will pounce on me and ask me, Maharaj, where did you get it from? <laughs> Isn't it? <clears throat> so Srila Prabhupada's books are actually the guideline and the basis. And another way of looking at it is, say, how we, when we are functioning as Guru, Diksha Guru or Shiksha Guru, are we functioning as Guru on our own right or as a part of ISKCON? And the difference is, see, if I had my own ashram, then I could be the Guru. But ISKCON is not my ashram. I am a part of ISKCON, I am a member of ISKCON. So I am functioning as a part of ISKCON. Say for example, <coughs> when 
ISKCON authorizes somebody, he becomes a guru. Uh, incidentally, I want to mention uh, that Dadadev Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj told me that the National Council of South Africa is proposing Nanda Kumar Prabhu to become a guru. And so uh, here we are. The institution is actually uh, giving us the responsibility or authorizing us. Now tomorrow, if the GBC tells me, Maharaj, you have to stop giving initiation, then what do I do? Don't I have to accept it? If I want to stay in ISKCON, I have to accept it. <laughs> so that, is, that shows my role, a, a guru's role in ISKCON is relative, not absolute. But who is the absolute guru? Who is the guru of ISKCON? Srila Prabhupada. So this is how hmm, we are securing the institution of ISKCON. The GBC has taken up the natural responsibility. In one hand, ISKCON has been secured very wonderfully due to this uh, formation of the GBC and the functioning of the GBC. ISKCON faced many, many difficulties. But all those difficulties have been effectively overcome by the concept of the GBC, by the arrangement of the GBC. And now to secure this uh, institution properly, like we, everybody knows Srila Prabhupada is the founder Acharya, but we felt that there is a need to emphatically let everybody know <coughs> what it means, what founder Acharya means. Have I been able to clarify it to some extent? What founder Acharya means? What Prabhupada's role in ISKCON is? Now in this respect, one point, one question came up when I was in London. That <clears throat> I was speaking about the same topic. And one, pers one person asked, what if some very prominent personality, very brilliant, spiritually exalted personality appears in ISKCON? What will happen? His question was something like, will he then uh, become the Acharya of ISKCON? Uh, or the founder Acharya of ISKCON? No. And I gave the example, like, in Christianity, there had been many, many uh, very brilliant personalities, spiritually extremely exalted personalities like St. Francis of Assisi, St. Aquinas, uh, brilliant personalities contributed incredibly to Christianity. But did they eclipse Jesus' position? No. They function. Uh, as subservient of Jesus. They glorified Jesus. They enhanced the glory of Jesus. Similarly, many great personalities in ISKCON will come. But what will they do? They will simply enhance the glory of Srila Prabhupada. So I have a few copies I brought with me. How many of you want to have a copy? Okay, very good. And uh, now, it's one thing Prabhupada told us, that don't give the books free. <laughs> <laughs> because if one gets the book free, then he won't give any value to it. He'll say, I got it free, so it doesn't have any value. 
So, uh, should I name a price or should I leave it up to you all? Okay, I'll say minimum 50 rands. And if you want to give more, you can. <laughs> because after all, this book is priceless. All these books are priceless. And what you give will go to the temple. Towards the book, what you give. Lakshmi, uh, I'm sorry, Nishingananda. Okay, uh, anyway, so uh, somebody can take the responsibility of the books and give them out. And uh, okay, thank you all very much. Does anybody have any question? Yeah, there's some written questions. possible to become a devotee when I as the mother of the family is committed to become a devotee and the rest of the family is so against it <clears throat> that is my husband and three children <laughs> Hare Krishna yes uh, you can become a devotee in any situation. May I ask you whose question is this? <laughs> if you feel shy, don't worry about it. Okay, I told you that you'll become a devotee. <laughs> and now I can see that you are a devotee. You're saying that you are a devotee. Huh? Okay, please sit down. Do you know the story of Prahlad Maharaj? Huh? No? You see, Prahlad Maharaj was the son of the king of the demons. And his father's business was to kill Krishna. His whole life's mission was to kill Krishna. Ah. And when he found out that his son became a devotee of Krishna, he wanted to kill him. He tried to kill him in so many ways. Now, first he ordered his bodyguards to kill him. And they unseat their weapons and tried to kill him couldn't do that. Then they put him in a pit of venomous snakes. Uh, nothing happened. They, try, he, they tried to burn him in a lit a fire like with the logs piled up like a mountain. Nothing happened. Uh, now in spite of all these difficulties, <coughs> Prahlad Maharaj did not give up his love and attachment to Krishna. Now my question is, will you give it up because some people are against your becoming a devotee? Huh? Wonderful. Don't give up. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't give up. Krishna is there, whether they believe or not. Krishna is in their hearts also. Krishna is not only in your heart, Krishna is in their hearts also. And Krishna can do anything. Maybe Krishna is putting you through the, this difficulty to make you a better devotee. Yeah. Because that's what happens in devotion. You know, devotion is love. Love for the Lord is called devotion. Uh, and don't you see, when love is obstructed, can the obstruction stop the love? Or it intensifies the love? Uh, so let that be with Krishna also. Uh, let your love for Krishna increase more and more when somebody tries to obstruct it. Hari bol. 
Can you clarify the reason for the change of the jugas, Dwapara uh, and oh, Treta? Dwapara and Teta, Hare Krishna. Yeah, good point. Whose question is this one? Okay, very good. Generally, the, the progression is like Satya Yuga, then Dwapar Yuga, then Treta Yuga, then Kali Yuga. Ah. It literally means that Dwapar means the second, Treta means the third. So first, second, third, fourth. Right? But here it has become like first, third, second, fourth. The reason is Krishna is meant to come at the end of Dwapar Yuga. And then in Kali Yuga, he would come as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Right? To let everybody know who Krishna is. Now, if the sequence was like that, Dwapar Yuga, then Treta Yuga, then Kali Yuga, then during this whole length of Treta Yuga, everybody would have forgotten who Krishna is, that he came, etc., etc. Uh, so by this divine arrangement, what happened? There was a switch. Treta Yuga came before, Dwapar Yuga came after, so that after, as the Dwapar Yuga ends and Kali Yuga begins, Krishna will come as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and tell everybody who Krishna is. Because Krishna's memory, memory of Krishna, will be so fresh in their minds. Okay? Thank you. <clears throat> Hare Krishna Maharaj, can you please explain the sign and the significance of Navaratri? I'm a little surprised. I spoke about the founder Acharya and your mind is stuck in Navaratri. <laughs> I won't ask you who are, I won't ask who wrote the question, who asked the question, because I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> but the thing is that please, uh, when you are sitting in a class, listen to it carefully. Don't let your mind hover around Navaratri or Sivaratri. <laughs> Navaratri is the time when Mother Durga comes to this planet. This earth planet is her father's house because she is the daughter of Himalayas. And her Sasurbari, <laughs> her in-law's house is Mount Kailash. So from there, from the abode of Lord Shiva, she comes to this earth planet visiting her parents and other relatives like us. <laughs> so that is called Navaratri. Next question. <clears throat> Hare Krishna Maharaj, your grace confirms that this movement will spread in every town and village. But in recent times we find so many devotees leaving how can we keep the devotees in ISKCON? Don't worry, they'll come back. <laughs> because Krishna consciousness, you see, it is said in Sanskrit, Krishna's, uh, the re aspect of Krishna's, uh, Krishna is like a hook. Uh, so once you have chanted the holy name, once you have swallowed the hook, <laughs> you are hooked. <laughs> so those who are going out, it's a good way, good thing to do. They can go and see huh, what kind of juice is there outside. <laughs> And when they'll see that it's all so dry and Krishna consciousness is so full of nectar, then they'll automatically come back. 
And anyway, uh, so as you are see, saying that so many devotees have left. Now, uh, what should you do? Please try to bring them back. Mm. If you're concerned uh, about their welfare, please try to bring them back. <clears throat> and besides that, ISKCON's door is always open. Anybody can come back to ISKCON anytime. And for that matter, I've seen devoted individuals, those who had even turned against ISKCON. Uh, they even went to the press and, and video shows speaking bad about ISKCON. Even they, when they came back, ISKCON said, come back, welcome home. Because that's what Prabhupada wants. Prabhupada wants to include everybody. We don't want to exclude anybody. We want to include everybody. But at the same time, uh, Srila Prabhupada also said, ISKCON is not a place for lazies and crazies. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for your association. Thank you very much. Uh, whose comment was that? Anyway, I know you're feeling shy. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Okay, I think that was the prelude. <laughs> Then come the question. <laughs> Will all the negative history on Diksha Gurus that have fallen down, I find it difficult to find to trust existing Gurus to go back to Lord Krishna. Can I not just take Prabhupada as my Guru without formal initiation? Yeah, good question. Now I know why you didn't <laughs> raise your hand. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you see, difficulties had been there in ISKCON, but ISKCON is actually establishing the perfect process for spiritual advancement. And ISKCON has this system that, uh, yes, one way to look at it is so many Diksha Gurus had spiritual difficulties. But if you look at it properly in ISKCON, then you'll say, yes, some had difficulties, but so many others didn't have difficulties. So why judge the whole movement uh, because on this negative perception? Rather look at the positive way and see the benefit of it. Why do we need to take Diksha? Huh? Why do we, if I ask you, huh? anyway, I don't want to even ask you, why do we need to take Diksha? Because this spiritual process is a process of surrender. Process of surrender. So you have to surrender. The Actually, our problem is, uh, in the material nature, we don't want to surrender. Hmm. We rather, we want that everybody else should surrender to me. I am not going to surrender to anybody. Isn't that a typical materialistic mentality? Yes. Ah. But spiritual life is completely opposed to that, is diametrically opposed to material attitude. <clears throat> in the material nature, nobody wants to surrender. In the spiritual nature, everybody is surrendered. Hmm. Surrendered to Krishna and Krishna's devotees, Krishna's representatives. Now it's difficult to surrender. 
Therefore, we have to find at least one person to whom I can say, well, I'll surrender to him. And you look for that person. <clears throat> and then eventually you surrender to him. And in ISKCON, who are you surrendering to ultimately? You are surrendering to Prabhupada. As you said, I will surrender to Prabhupada. But what is the guarantee that you are surrendering? How will you know where you are surrendering to Prabhupada? How will you know that Srila Prabhupada is accepting you or not? Therefore, you need someone officially to surrender to. And ultimately, you are actually surrendering to the institution. The gurus in ISKCON, what they are telling the disciples? I am a transparent via medium. Guru is not the end. Guru is the medium. And he is transparent. Transparent means nothing stops in him. Everything passes through. So you come to him and he offers you to Srila Prabhupada. So that is why you need to take Diksha. To officially surrender to somebody. And when you surrender to him, because he is Krishna's representative, Krishna will accept you. If you don't want to go that far, it's because he is representing ISKCON, ISKCON is accepting you. Because ISKCON is accepting you, Srila Prabhupada is accepting you. And because Srila Prabhupada is accepting you, Krishna is accepting you for uh, sure. So now, <clears throat> I will suggest, look around, shop around. <laughs> <laughs> but do surrender. <laughs> With ISKCON growing so much, and a lot of new idea, to spread Krishna consciousness. How can we stay true to Srila Prabhupada? Yeah, line up to those ideas that are spreading Krishna consciousness, that is meant to spread Krishna consciousness. That's how you remain true to Srila Prabhupada. Do you want ISKCON to grow? Then, when some effort is being made to expand ISKCON, what should you do? Stand aside and watch the fun? <laughs> no. Line up. Uh, commit yourself. Uh, because your contribution, your involvement is very, very important. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Gold, Preman and Be. Can I have the harmonium? You can have a little kirtan. What is that table? Is it a table or cushion? This table may be... Okay, okay. Nishikananda Prabhu was saying that the books will be kept here on the table and those of you one who want the book, please take it and read it carefully. Uh, mind you, you're paying for it, so <laughs> get your money's worth. <laughs>
प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि नमो ओम विष्णु पदाये कृष्ण प्रस्थाये भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नितिनामिने नमस्ते शालश्चते देवे गोरवानी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शुन्नवादी पश्चत्तानिष्ठानि श्रील प्रभुपाद की हरे कृष्णा Yeah. 